Hello, everyone. Welcome to worship today as we gather around the Word of God to hear words of grace and to grow in our faith as disciples of the Lord Jesus. Two things before we begin our worship today. The first is this is now our second week with the new equipment. Last week was a learning experience for us. What we've learned are, is that um, the video and the sound is much better. It's much, much nicer seeing the, uh, the worship service um, as it actually happens. However, what we've learned is that the turnaround time to get it um, to the camera, to the internet, takes a little bit longer than we thought. So what we're gonna be doing is our goal every Sunday with these videos is to have them online by 11 a.m. And um, you can access those on our webpage. You can go to Facebook on our webpage and get them there, or there will be an email blast um, when it's ready every Sunday morning as well. So our new equipment is, is working well. It just takes a little bit longer to get it online. And so 11 a.m. is now our goal. So today is Pentecost Sunday. It's an exciting day. It's the coming of the Holy Spirit. This is the last big event in Christ's life until he comes again on the last day at the parousia, the return of the king. Remember the key events of Christ's life. You have the, the incarnation where he's born in Bethlehem, God in flesh. You have his baptism where he begins officially his, his work and his uh, ministry as the Messiah and the Savior of the world. And then, of course, it culminates with his death on the cross, his burial, and his resurrection on the third day. Forty days later, he ascended into heaven. We celebrated that last week. And now today, 10 days later, is Pentecost Sunday. This is the day where the Lord promised that he would send the Holy Spirit to his people, and he did. The story is in Acts chapter 2. We're going to be looking at that today. This is where the mission of the church begins, to go and, and take that gospel good news of Jesus into all the world. It's a day where we remember that um, Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Holy Trinity. Glad you're with us today on this Pentecost Sunday. God's blessings and your worship today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship today. Oh, yeah, the sun, yeah. Uh, it's Pentecost Sunday. Today we're going to, it's one of these feast days, this festival where I'm um, an event in Christ's life that we're celebrating. And um, remember that during Jesus' ministry, he promised his disciples that once he um, um, was lifted up and ascended into heaven, he would send a gift to them, the promised Holy Spirit. And today is that day where he sends that gift. And um, we remember the Acts chapter 2 story, which we'll hear in just a little bit. And um, so we're going to be taking a look at um, the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives today. Let's start with um, how we confess it publicly to the world um, in the creed. Let's read this together. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified. Pentecost Sunday, the Holy Spirit's our theme. Glad that you're here. Go ahead and stand and let's sing our opening song.
We gather today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. I confess to Almighty God, before the whole company of heaven, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful Lord grant you pardon, forgiveness, and the remission of all of your sins. Amen. Today in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For this congregation and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. We join together in prayer. Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may be all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my work too may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I love what is holy. Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit, to defend all that is holy. 
Guard me then, O Holy Spirit, that I always may be holy. Amen. Please be seated. The first script, scripture reading this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 41. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of our Lord. And everyone who calls on, his na on the name of the Lord will be saved. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited, to, accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope, because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him an, on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brother, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
the promises for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. It's from John chapter 16, verses 7 through 15. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. Continue now with the Apostles' Creed. We remember back to our own baptism as we confess the Creed together. Do you renounce the devil and all of his evil works and all of his wicked ways? In whom do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and was saved. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Thank you. You may be seated.
It was nine o'clock on a Sunday morning. 120 people had gathered with the apostles to worship the Lord. It had been 50 days since Jesus rose from the dead. Ten days earlier, Jesus ascended into heaven. And he told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem for a gift that he would send to them. They would be clothed with power from on high, Jesus said. The disciples had no idea what he meant by that, but they waited anyway. At 9 a.m. on Pentecost Sunday, a powerful sound of wind thundered in the sky above Jerusalem. It caught everyone's attention. It is described as the sound of a mighty rushing wind. A sound, but no wind. The loud sound falls from heaven and it lands on a single house the exact place where the apostles were worshiping. Then there was the fire. Tongues like fire. Not fire itself, but fire-looking wisps on top of each person. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they praised God. Wind and fire... These are Old Testament signs of God's presence amongst his people. It signaled to everybody that God was present in that house. He was amongst his people now in a new way in these New Testament times. God was at work through the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Holy Trinity. That means that the Holy Spirit is God. The Bible gives the Holy Spirit divine attributes, divine works, divine names, divine glory, divine honor. The Holy Spirit is a person of the triune Godhead. He's not simply the love of God. He's not reduced simply to some kind of power of God, as the false teachers claim. Rather, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Holy Trinity, equal to God the Father, equal to God the Son, Jesus Christ. Here's how we confess it in the Nicene Creed. Let's read this together. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified. The Holy Spirit is equal to the Father and to the Son. The Holy Spirit is God, the third person of the Holy Trinity. One of the main works of the Holy Spirit is that he creates your faith and then he nourishes it and sustains it and strengthens it throughout your life. It's the Holy Spirit who has created that faith within you so that you can believe in Jesus as your Savior and God as your Father in heaven. In fact, the New Testament teaches us that no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Martin Luther summarized it like this in the small catechism. Let's read this together. I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, and sanctifies and keeps me in the one true faith. God the Holy Spirit works through the word of God and through the sacraments to create your faith. And then for the rest of your life, he works to nourish your faith, to sustain it, to strengthen it. On that first Pentecost Sunday, the Holy Spirit was at work through the word of God to create faith in people's lives. 
And the book of Acts teaches us that 3,000 people came to know and believe and were baptized that day. Those people believed and they were baptized and their sins were forgiven, just like us. The same Holy Spirit works in our hearts and in our lives. He's worked through the Word of God and through the water of holy baptism to create your faith in Christ, to forgive your sins forever. You know how the Holy Spirit has worked in your life. Just think through your faith story. That's the Holy Spirit's fingerprints all over your life. Here's how Titus in the New Testament teaches it to us. Let's read this together. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us richly through Christ, Christ our Savior so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. You have been washed clean by the Holy Spirit. You have been made new in the forgiveness of your sins. If you have faith in Christ today, it's because of God the Holy Spirit. He's worked through the word and through the sacraments to give you that faith and to strengthen that faith throughout your life. He's worked in your life to bring you to faith, and your faith story is His work in your life. The Holy Spirit continues to work within you through His Word and through His sacraments to nourish and sustain and strengthen you. Let me highlight two ways that you see the Holy Spirit at work in your life. The first is that we heard today in the Gospel of John, and this is repeated frequently in John, that the Holy Spirit is described as an advocate. Here's an example. Let's read this together. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. This promise is repeated three times in three consecutive chapters of the Gospel of John. The word advocate means a companion. It means a comforter. It means a defender. It has the idea of someone who comes alongside of you to help you and to give you aid. The Holy Spirit comes alongside of you to help you, give you aid, to defend you, to comfort you, and to counsel you. Just like Jesus walked with his disciples in his life, so now the Holy Spirit walks alongside of you in your life. That means that God is with you every moment of every day. The Holy Spirit is your advocate. He's alongside of you. He is there forever as your helper, giving you aid as your advocate. What that means for you is that when the Holy Spirit comes alongside of you as your advocate to nurture and sustain your faith through the word and the sacraments, that he's there guiding and directing your life as you live as a disciple so that you know what to do and how to live and what's right and what's wrong based on God's holy word. The Holy Spirit comes alongside of you to strengthen you and uplift you each day. The Holy Spirit comes alongside of you to comfort you and to encourage you in every trial and in every burden. The Holy Spirit comes alongside of you to give you boldness and zeal and even courage as you live a godly life in Christ. The Holy Spirit comes alongside of you so that you can be biblically literate and doctrinally sound and mission-minded and passionately engaged. Look back through your life and in your faith story and you will see the work of the Holy Spirit. That's his work in your life. 
your maturity and your wisdom in the Christian faith comes through the Holy Spirit as he works through his word and through his sacraments. He's your advocate. He's alongside of you every moment of every day of your life. He's your companion. He's your comforter. He's your helper. He's your defender. The Holy Spirit is with you. A second thing to keep in mind about the Holy Spirit is that he lives and he dwells personally within you. The Bible speaks of this in many and various ways, but they all mean the same thing, that the Holy Spirit in these New Testament days lives and dwells within you in a mysterious way, but nevertheless a real and powerful way. The Bible talks about this in many and various ways. Here's an example. You're going to recognize these phrases. These are all synonyms. They all mean the same thing. The Holy Spirit lives within you. The Bible says you're led by the Spirit. You are baptized by the Spirit. You are sanctified by the Spirit. You are empowered by the Spirit. You are filled with the Spirit. You are sealed with the Spirit. You are helped by the Spirit. You bear fruit by the Spirit. You are gifted by the Spirit. You are born again by the Spirit. You are renewed by the Spirit. The Bible even teaches us to consider our bodies as temples that God dwells within. The Holy Spirit dwells within you. All of these terms and all these phrases are pointing to the same thing. The reality in these New Testament times through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is that the Holy Spirit dwells within you. He's always present in your life. He's always at work in your life as your counselor and defender and helper and giving you aid to, to strengthen and nourish and, and sustain your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and in God as your Father in heaven. That's his work in your life. The Holy Spirit sanctifies you. He sets you apart by giving you faith and then enabling you to live a strong Christian faith and to hold to the truths of God's holy word. Because the Holy Spirit is in your life, you have that desire to be a Christian. You have a desire to live a holy and godly life. Because the Holy Spirit's in your life, you, you long to worship the Lord and to obey his word. Because of the Holy Spirit in your life, you, are, you look for ways to help people and to serve other people. Because of the Holy Spirit in your life, you boldly confess his name in your life when you talk with other people. Because of the Holy Spirit, you are eager and passionate to use the gifts he has given you to serve in the kingdom of God. This is all part of the Holy Spirit's work in our lives to sanctify us. He sets you apart so that you can live a holy and godly life. The Holy Spirit's powerful and he is at work and present in your life. This new way in these New Testament times and today, as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, we thank God that he has revealed the Holy Spirit to us and that, and that he works in this way in our lives. The promise of Pentecost is that the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Holy Trinity, is always with you. And he's always at work in your life through his word and through his sacraments so that you can live as a disciple of the Lord Jesus. Amen.
So today is a congregational meeting, 1245 Family Life Center. You are all welcome and invited to attend. There's an information sheet on the counter in the entryway. Um, copies of the budget will be available at the, at the meeting today. Um, Vacation Bible School in a box is coming up soon, and it's, it's going to be an exciting thing. Here's the latest video. <laughs> Monday coming up fast. Um, today we have communion. Just a reminder on communion, we're going to continue probably for a while now. Um, the end of the, the, the um, continual line communion. Um, Marvin and I will um, will hand sanitize our hands and we'll have the mask on. And um, just when you're ready, just come up and um, we'll have um, two stations here with the, with the bread and the wine like um, we do in the Family Life Center. Please rise for prayer and Holy Communion. We pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for revealing to us your person and work. We ask that you sanctify us as you work through your word and sacrament. Be our advocate and fill us with your presence and power each day. Empower us to be bold and courageous in our Christian faith and life. We ask you, O Lord, to grant and preserve to your holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and faithful pastors and teachers to preach and teach your word. Help all who hear the word rightly to understand it and to truly believe it. Lord, we ask that you would send laborers into the harvest and open the door of faith to those who do not know you. In mercy, remember the enemies of your church and lead them to repentance. Protect and defend your church in all tribulation and danger. Strengthen us and all fellow Christians in faith and godly living so that we may fight the good fight of faith, and in the end, we may see you face to face in the kingdom of heaven. We pray that you would give your saving grace to all the people of the earth. Bless our country and all who are in authority. Let your glory dwell in our land, that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may everywhere abound. We commend to you the care of Lutheran schools and ask that you grant that our children may grow in faith and knowledge and bring forth wholesome fruits of life. Lord, we pray for all who need your care. We remember pregnant women and young mothers, the lonely and the afflicted, those who suffer from addiction, and those who mourn and grieve. We remember those who need healing. We thank you that Susan Wells is now back home after being hospitalized this week. We ask that you would protect and, and defend all um, who need your loving care. Father in heaven, graciously defend us from all calamity by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine, and from every other evil. Protect and prosper everyone in his rightful calling, and empower us to be faithful in our vocations as we serve you and help others. Be the God and Father of the widow and the fatherless, the helper of the sick and needy, the comforter of the forsaken and distressed. Accept, we implore you, O Lord, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offerings we bring before you for your praise and service. Grant your Holy Spirit to those who come to the Lord's table today, that they may receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ in sincere repentance and firm faith and to their abundant blessings. Lord, we know that we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, so please help us by the true faith and godly life to prepare for our eternal home, doing the work which you have given us to do while it is day, 
before the night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour comes, graciously take us from this veil of tears to yourself in heaven. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood in the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated.
quickly dry. And now may this true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace with great joy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.